Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again and welcome to any new viewers. This is To The Point English with Ben. I'm Ben. And in this video you're going to witness two English teachers creating the perfect English learner or the perfect English student. Now of course in reality, in the real world, uh, perfection doesn't really exist. Uh, but what we're talking about here is the hypothetical perfect English learner, sort of the uber learner, so to speak. And you may be asking, who are these two English teachers? Well, one of them is me, of course, and the other is Gideon from what is, in my opinion, one of the best English learning YouTube channels, Let Them Talk TV. Now, I assume that you all know about Gideon already and you're following his fantastic YouTube channel. Uh, but if not, if there's anybody out there who's not subscribed to Let Them Talk TV, I'll put the link to that channel in my video description. So, how are we going to create the perfect English learner in this video? Well, I asked Gideon to come up with five adjectives which describe what he believes to be the characteristics of a good English student or a good English learner. And I also came up with five adjectives which I believe describe the characteristics of a good English learner. And we're going to reveal them today. I don't know what Gideon's are, he doesn't know what mine are, so it's possible that we'll coincide or maybe at the end we'll have two adjectives to describe the perfect English learner. One more thing before we get started, I have to apologize for the quality of the video in this chat, specifically my video. Um, I live in a very remote area in the north of Spain and the internet connection is awful. Uh, we, we did this interview via Zoom and you'll see that the, the quality is pretty bad. I hope it doesn't spoil your enjoyment of the chat because I think it's really interesting and we share some really useful tips for your uh, English learning journey and hopefully you'll find it motivating. Okay, so without any further ado, enjoy the video. Gideon, welcome, welcome back to the channel. Uh, hi Ben, and it's a, a special moment for me, of course, to be oh. on your channel once again. A well, privilege. Then. You're very, very welcome. I, I've also <laughs> appeared on Gideon's channel yes. once, which was a, also a privilege and an honor. The last time Gideon appeared on my channel, we, we kind of had a, a general chat. But today we're going to do something a little bit more special in that we're going to try to create the perfect uh, English student, the perfect English learner. The way we're going to do this is that we both have five adjectives. I think we both have five adjectives, right, Gideon? You have your five That's adjectives. That's right. I have five, yeah. Okay, great. I don't know what Gideon's adjectives are. He doesn't know what mine are. Um, it's possible that we may coincide with some adjectives. I'm thinking maybe that we're going to coincide on some of them because I asked around because you sent me an email mm -hmm. asking for five adjectives. And I asked around um, some of my students, my um, uh, fellow teachers, and the list wasn't exactly the same, but mm -hmm. but there, there were some that it kept repeating, but these are my own. So these are adjectives to describe what we believe would be this hypothetical, perfect English language learner. And Which so, we hope is you. Exactly, yeah. Well, if, if it's it not be. yet, it should be by, by the end of this, yes. this video, it will be you because you'll be yeah. taking these... these <laughs> these tips or these adjectives on board and implementing them. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but um, I think it should be fun. So let's get started with the first adjective. Shall I start or would you like to start, Gideon? Ben, please. Okay, if it's the same, you say snap. By the way, snap in English is a card game, that a very basic card game. And when both players turn over the same card, you shout snap. And the person who puts their hand down first get, wins the pack of cards on the table. So we use that this word in other contexts when people say the same thing, or even if they wear the same clothes, right? If we're, yeah, I mean, Gideon and I are both wearing blue jumpers, so I guess we could say snap. I wait until you you finish before I say snap or. Okay, yeah. So you wait, okay. and then and then you can uh, say if you if any adjective I have on my list is on your list too. Uh, okay. Okay. So my first adjective for the perfect English student, uh, they should be or must be proactive proactive so what do i mean by that uh, the perfect english student would take the initiative so they're not waiting for things to be done for them so not waiting for a teacher or 
um, any anyone else to to do the work for them. They have to go looking for opportunities to to use their English and to improve their English and you know learn more vocabulary, expand their vocabulary, uh, revise grammar, practice grammar, uh, pronunciation, all these areas. Just be, be proactive. Don't be passive. Don't wait for it to happen. Make it happen. Be proactive. Gideon, what do you think? Uh, no, I totally agree. I don't say, I didn't say snap. I mm -hmm. kind of got the same idea. And when I wrote, first of all, a list of 10 and and whittled it down, took it down to five, proactive came off the list because mm -hmm. I think it's covered by um, my first one. Shall I tell you? Yeah, yeah, go for it. You go for your Which first one. Cover yeah. some of the same ground and that's uh, motivated. Right. So do you feel that in many ways a motivated students would a motivated student would be proactive? Not necessarily, but it has part that's part of it, isn't it? If you're motivated, you're going to be proactive. Yes, almost by definition. And uh, for me, motivation, I've, I've said this in, in many of my videos that uh, if you're motivated, doesn't matter how how old you are, and uh, or ha how uh, um, uh, how how clever you are, or whatever whatever your personality is like, motivation is the most important thing for learning a, a language. Probably for learning anything, uh, yeah. if you're motivated, you you're going to get there in the end. Yes. Yeah. Just to give you like a practical example, I mean, yesterday evening it was uh, I had a lesson yesterday. It was a cold rainy evening in, in in Paris in winter time and I had a few people coming to my lesson they traveled some of them from the suburbs of Paris uh, like 40 minutes 45 minutes to get into the lesson and 45 minutes 45 minutes to, to get back just just for the lesson that's that's motivation the people who are prepared to do that Definitely, uh, yeah. week in week out day in day out uh these are the people that learn the people that come once and then realize that why should i go and learn english i could do it online or i could just uh you know just watch tv or watch netflix uh yeah they 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 fall by the wayside pretty quickly so i'll move on to my next one now if that's okay, okay. yeah so my next adjective to describe uh, the perfect english learner is in my opinion, they should be inquisitive. So you should be inquisitive as, a, as an English learner. And what, what I mean by inquisitive is that you need to ask questions. I mean, if you are attending an English class, you should ask questions in the class if you have any doubts or if you want to clarification. I mean, that's, that's quite a basic idea. My, my, I don't know if it's the same for you, Gideon, but my favorite students are the ones that ask questions in class. Yeah. Uh, and usually when one student asks a question, it means that other students have the same question, but they're not willing to ask the question, or maybe they're a bit embarrassed or shy, but you have to be inquisitive. But I, I'm not only referring to in class, I'm referring to whenever you're watching a film in English or reading a book, listening to a podcast, watching a YouTube video, that you, you kind of ask yourself questions and think, well, I wonder why that person used the present perfect instead of the past simple in this case, or why they pronounce this word in that way or what you know just con continuously being inquisitive about the language in general i think it helps you to continue learning and to to continue um could be broadening you know widening your vocabulary range or improving your grammar but I think if you're inquisitive if you're continuously asking questions you're going to learn more i think it's kind of a snap already <laughs> okay. i haven't got inquisitive but i've got curious okay yes i would say and I totally agree with you. You 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 feel that in the classroom, aren't you? With a with a certain students, you'll you'll somebody will be speaking, or teacher will be speaking, and they'll say, "No, why why did you use uh, relation instead of relationship? Why did why do you use use like make instead of do? I, I, can you explain that? Yeah. Uh, I really need to know. Or yeah, you use the, use the past simple, not not present perfect, but but but, but surely in this case. Uh, th those people, yeah, that 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 curiosity, that burning curiosity, that bur that that desire for knowledge. I always say that to learn a language, you need to pay attention because you, people always say, you know, if you live in a in an English speaking country or the, the country which speaks your target language, you're going to just learn 
the language, but not necessarily. If you don't pay attention, yeah. if you're not if you're not inquisitive and curious, then it's not guaranteed. Yeah, exactly. That's another one of the myths. Oh, I'm living in a, a, a wherever in England, so I'm going to mm. learn English. Well, of course it helps. It's around you all the time. Mm. Uh, you still need to do the things necessary to raise your level, don't you? Exactly. You just sit on your ass and expect, <laughs> uh, you know to 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 uh, just uh, pick up the language just like that no so yeah so if you not if you if you're not living in an english speaking country then surround yourself immerse yourself in english and but pay attention and be inquisitive and curious i'm, I'm sure you you've had the same experience uh, as i have uh, meeting uh, learners of english who've never been to an english speaking country and yet they speak english beautifully yeah, wonderfully. Or they maybe they spend a weekend in I don't know somewhere. Gibraltar. Exactly. But uh, but uh, yeah. So so it's yeah. it's it's a myth that you can't learn a language. It's just one of the myths I try to, you know, discredit that you you, you can't learn a language unless you live in the country. No. Yeah. Not true. I, I'm disappointed, Gideon. You didn't say to dispel the myth because in my last video I taught that collocation. Oh, just so. <laughs> I was thinking the word. The word didn't come. <laughs> yeah, because always when I... that moment. Yeah. As always in my videos, there's always one person who says nobody uses these, nobody uses these uh, <laughs> advanced words or collocations, and and that that's proof that just because Gideon couldn't yeah. remember the word or couldn't find it at that moment, remember the word he used couldn't to dispel me. Just... Yeah. So moving on to my next one now, yeah, my next one is patient, patient. I think all language learners need to be patient, and the reason I say that, the reason I think it's an important characteristic of a good language learner is that it takes a long time to learn a language you know the, all these courses and books that promise that you can learn in, in three months it's not true you need to be patient it takes a long time and if you're not patient you're going to get frustrated and you're going to get a bit demoralized because you think you should be learning more quickly mm -hmm. it should be improving but you know, just be patient and understand that learning a language takes time in fact it's it's never ending. You, you you have to understand that you, you know, you're never going to speak perfect English. I don't speak perfect English. Maybe Gideon does, but most people don't. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> so the, the objective is unrealistic. So you just have to, you, it's a, a lifelong journey. Uh, Gideon, do you have a, a snap for that one? or I do not have a snap for that one. However, I do agree with you 100%. I agree okay. with you on 100% on that. You do need to be patient. And um, so often... I've had students, new students come to me. So when, when will I be fluent? <laughs> how long, how many lessons do I need to be fluent? Is it yeah. 10 or 20? I need to know. I said, well, no, I, I can't give you that lesson. It could take, it can take years. You know, it's going to take years. No, I'm, I, I don't, I'm, I'm going to go to another, I'm going somewhere else. This, this guy's telling me this can take years. I don't yeah. have that time. I'm, I'm a busy man. And someone else, another another <laughs> centre, may promise them, yeah, in in forty lessons you, you'll be fluent. Don't worry that. But it's, it's yeah, exactly. Right. We don't teach boring grammar. <laughs> We're just going to make you fluent in three months. Just hand over the cash, and everything will be all right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and if you're not, it's your fault, not theirs. <laughs> exactly. You didn't. Yeah. It's, it's not our fault. Yeah. It's the attitude again. It's it's that cliche that it's it's a journey. It's you know it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. But yeah, um, yeah. But but it's but you enjoy the journey. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's the pleasure of it. That's the fun of it, isn't it? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I think if you can find a way, and that, again that takes it back to motivation. If you can yeah. find a way to enjoy the journey, you're going to be more motivated and yeah. uh, and proactive and and all these other things. So. And, and there is no there is no destination you know i'm like a um a, a train from madrid to barcelona there is no destination you don't arrive at the station you say i'm fluent now no it's just it's it's a lifelong you know uh, uh passion and um uh, learning exactly. yeah you learn throughout your life yeah exactly i mean i, I should mention a, a lot of my subscribers and viewers are preparing for english exams cambridge english exams and so they have these short-term destinations or objectives yeah yeah but that's not the final destination as you said Gideon there isn't a final destination that's just you know one step on the journey yeah exams motivate exactly and of course exactly. uh you know it's great if you pass an exam and you get c2 
Oh, Kev, but remember the the idea of that B one, C one, C two. Is it those those are invented mm -hmm. uh, uh, terms? Yeah, it's great. It it shows how how much you progressed, but it doesn't it doesn't stop there. Even native speakers, you know, I'm still learning exactly learning my own language, trying to improve the whole time. Exactly. Even getting an A in the C two proficiency exam, it doesn't mean that that's it. Also, I can I can stop now because no. I've reached the destination. I can get off the train and that's it. Let's <laughs> move on. Exactly. Do something Good. different. Yeah. So yeah, what's your next one, Gideon? Um, I put a good listener. It, it's yeah. You, people talk about um, speaking English, but also to uh, listen to. Uh, pick up on what you consider to be the right way of speaking, listening to to ways that you can improve your uh, your your conversation, uh, listening to all those around you, listen to your teacher, listen to everyone you speak to. you you can you're you're constantly um, picking up new information. Mm -hmm. and you, do, do you agree with that? Yeah, again, I guess it's related to the paying attention, right? It, I, I always say that you have to pay attention. It's not just... It's if not you... A, um, I don't know if you listen to a podcast, or you listen to one of your... your um, watch one of your videos, uh, Ben, and you really listen to what's going on. Even in, in a podcast, on the radio, in an hour, you could learn 10 new words. You could, I think, even sort of subconsciously, you're learning the whole time if you, if you're concentrating on how the uh, um, the language is presented. I, I agree. It's, not, it's sort of active listening in a way. Active listening, yes, Act, yeah. It's, it's active listening. It's not just passively sitting there. You're thinking, well, yeah, that's interesting how they 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 said that. I've never heard that idiom before. Let me let me look it up. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, those, those words together. That's is that collocation. Exactly. Yeah. And, and as you said, things. you kind of pick up the, the subconsciously the structures of English. Yeah. You don't necessarily need to study the syntax or the word order, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. You just, you just know over time from listening and pay, paying attention what's what words go together, as you said, collocations and in how the language is used. So, yeah, yeah. good one to be. You have to be a good listener. I I couldn't agree more. So my next one is brave. I think a good language learner needs to be brave. And I, I say brave in that it's this cliche again, that you have to leave your comfort zone. You have to put yourself in situations that perhaps you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't choose to put yourself in like um, speaking, like putting yourself in a, you know, in maybe in your class, in your English class where you, mm -hmm stand up and, and or volunteer to, to answer a question or to say something or in real life, you know, don't always shy away from opportunities to use your English. Maybe your boss wants someone to give a presentation, you know, someone in the department to give a presentation in English and you, you don't volunteer because you're, you're not comfortable, but if you're brave, then you, you're going to get so much benefit from those opportunities if you just avoid them all the time, it's going to be difficult to continue improving. And so take a step forward and face those um, or take advantage of the opportunities and don't shy away from them. I totally agree. <clears throat> and um, if you need to make a phone call in a foreign language and maybe your level in English, if you're learning English and you don't have a great level and yet you're prepared to do that. That, that, that takes courage. That does take courage. It's not easy. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're prepared to go out and meet a group of people and you're the only non-native English speaker, that that's daunting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, that requires bravery. Yeah. Sure. And, and if you're prepared to give a presentation, it's not your first language. Sure, it does. It's it's much easier to get someone else to do it oh, well, for, for a presentation or just not to do it at all. Just say, yeah. no, this is not for me. I just exactly. don't, don't. This is just going to hurt me too much. Yeah. Going back to bed. Easy, yeah. Going back to bed. Yeah. Take take the easy, <laughs> yeah. easy way out. Yeah. Instead, exactly. Avoid the <clears throat> uncomfortable situations. But that's not exactly. 
not really how we improve and grow and, and all that. So yeah, just be brave when you have the opportunity. As Gideon said, and maybe even even in social situations at a party or in a bar, maybe there are some people speaking to an English speaker, <clears throat> and maybe your instinct is to to go and sit with your friends who speak your language. But if you, you know, yeah. see it as an opportunity rather than uh and you're, you're, you're choosing to put yourself in a difficult and potentially embarrassing situation as well. Yeah. And it can be embarrassing. You misunderstand. You completely misunderstand. We've all had uh, those experiences learning a foreign language. You, you, you misunderstand something. And, uh, yeah, but, but you, you, you go back and do it again and again. Yeah, that is, that, that's brave. Yeah. You're exposing yeah. yourself to something to potential humiliation, but uh, <laughs> it, it depends how you how you C a certain it. humiliation <laughs> from uh, from time to time. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm sure we've got uh, uh, tales to tell from uh, which we'll go go over another time of uh, embarrassing moments when we've been learning foreign languages. Yeah, we got it wrong. Yeah, but uh, those are the ones no, you I remember, have. right? Yeah, I've I've used the, the wrong word in Spanish, and it's been slightly embarrassing and humiliating at that moment but I, I've, I've never <laughs> forgotten that moment and i've never forgotten the correct word so yeah those... i think in spanish for learning spanish just one i remember using accidentally saying um puta instead of pato when i wanted to talk <laughs> about ducks i started talking Oof. about prostitutes so uh yeah um that was a very embarrassing moment but that but that, yeah but you go back <laughs> <laughs> but you, ne uh, you never pick forget yourself it, yeah. up and you go back into the into the into the ring exactly yeah my only one with spanish is saying i said pulpo instead of pulpa which is octopus instead of so i was looking for orange juice with, <laughs> yeah. with pulp so I, okay. I asked for orange juice in the supermarket orange juice with octopus instead of orange juice with pulp. <laughs> okay. so yeah I never did, they, did they give you that maybe uh, no i think the, the guy kind of laughed a little <laughs> bit but he, he he was very understanding and uh, <laughs> took me to the orange juice okay. so, yeah. But yeah, these things happen okay. in this part of the, the learning experience. So yeah. embrace embrace these situations. Embrace it. Make, it makes a good story later on. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And you never yeah, forget. Yeah. So yeah, it's um yeah, yeah it, it, it's as you said, it's a good story. It's funny. It, it's not people not that people are laughing at you. It's just you. It's a funny situation. So yeah, yeah. Be brave and, exactly. and put yourself in those positions. Okay, Gideon, what's your next adjective? Well, the next one, and this I know. Well, sort of anecdotal evidence as well. It's uh, chatty. The oh. people, it, it's not obvious at first, but just in my experience, people who speak a lot, people who chat a lot, well, they're getting, they're getting more practice mm -hmm. and they tend to learn quicker. The ones that sit at the back of the class taking notes, maybe listening attentively, but taking notes and uh, not engaging with others but the people who who uh, who, who chat who go out and talk or go to go to the to the cafes to the to the bars and and uh, talk a lot yeah just get yourself out there get lots of conversation talk a lot and this is not as I, this is not just my theory i just just feel it as well from the people yeah. But there's a, there's a flaw in that, isn't there, Gideon? Because people who speak more and chat more make more mistakes, and that's terrible, isn't it? If you make a mistake, <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't make mistakes. Yeah, don't, don't just don't open your mouth if you think you're going to make a mistake. <laughs> exactly, it's better just to, to be silent in case you make a mistake and well, humiliate yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah but you, you, but but of course, I mean, you, you, I, I, I know you're kidding, but if you're talking more, you're making more mistakes, and maybe people are correcting you more, so you're getting more input, so you, so yeah. you get a second chance and a third chance. Exactly. so if you if you're using the language you get feedback in the form of making mistakes and being corrected and yeah or even just you know just using the language and it's that idea of use it or lose it so the vocabulary yeah. and grammar if, if if you don't use it it's going to be difficult to remember it and, and and use it correctly in context so yeah that's a good one exactly so the people who talk a lot they end up learning quite uh quite um quite quickly quite well but you need to be a good listener too there's no yeah. point in just being blighty 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 you don't also listen to others as well so yeah they, they they go hand in hand yeah i guess some people will be watching this and thinking but i'm i'm just not a talkative person i, I but i think you do have to kind of it's about 
you know you want to improve your English, so you have to kind of make the effort and 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 be be a little bit do, force yourself to be to be different. You know, maybe to to make that extra effort to to. Well, it links to what you said earlier about being brave. I mean, I, I know I, I'm I'm quite a shy person myself, and I'm particularly shy if, I, if I'm speaking a foreign language. But you just could forget about the mistakes that you're inevitably going to make and just uh just, just just do it anyway my fifth and last adjective um it's one well i'll explain it after i say it perhaps it's tenacious tenacious um and i say tenacious i'm, I'm actually going to read the, the cambridge dictionary definition of tenacious so that we, we understand what i mean because it has a, a few different meanings there's a, a more technical meaning about how it's, it's, it's like scientifically that it's something that sticks to something else or well that's not important my my the meaning that i'm using is that uh, a tenacious person is unwilling to accept defeat or stop doing or having something so i was thinking of different words like stubborn but i think stubborn is has a bit of a negative connotation so you know persistent that those kinds of adjectives but tenacious for me you know a tenacious language learner They'll just keep going. They'll keep going and doing whatever is necessary to keep improving. So uh, I guess they have to be motivated, which, uh, as as Gideon said before, but, you know, they're not going to give up after the first setback. You know, if they fail an exam or if they make a mistake or they feel that they've embarrassed themselves, they're going to be, you know, they're going to keep keep going, keep going. You know, it's, they also have to be patient, but to be tenacious not to give up just because you've uh, suffered some kind of setback. Anything close to a snap there, Gideon? Or? No, no, no snap, no, no snap, snap. But you, you won't, you won't be surprised to learn that I do agree with you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it just reminded me that the, the other day I was watching um, the biography of, of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh yeah, and uh, his tenacity was extraordinary mm -hmm. he just he had these goals and whatever setbacks he had he just could just continue to continue continued pressing on and pressing on uh, as you say yeah you just you just get up and continue the fight yeah okay so yeah tenacious and the last one so are we going to get i think we're going to get 10 adjectives i think they're all okay. different but um yeah what's your your fifth and final Mine adjective? is analytical oh. we might have covered some of that ground to take a sentence and say well okay but in my language it's not like this let's see how it goes or right, well, this this grammar we this um tense whatever you always give the examples present perfect <laughs> why is it like this and okay and let me get some examples and let's compare it here and then yeah 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 and that sort of analysis of a word. Why are we using this word here, not this word? This this an, analyzing the language because you do it does require a certain amount of. Yeah, you could say, well, you just go out and speak and just uh, pick it up that way. Uh, but no, analyzing the language. Yeah, yeah, that, I that yeah helps. I, I agree. Yeah, I also agree. Unsurprisingly, it's a. Uh... Yeah, I think I, I. We should say both Gideon and I are not just. English teachers we have also learned I mean I, I only speak one other language I don't know if you, you speak more than you speak a couple of other languages don't you uh, well I've lived in uh, France and Spain so I get by and know one or two other to a lesser extent right so the important things we know what it takes to learn a language um, and yeah for me I remember especially at the beginning uh, living in Spain you're just surrounded by Spanish all the time but if as, as Gideon said, you have to take time to to think about it, to analyze it, and and to work out yeah. why we use these structures and why that this is correct and this is incorrect. Exactly. I remember from from Spanish, yeah, subjunctive. Oh, okay, well, we don't have, we don't use that very much in English. Um, we do use it a bit because I've got a wonderful video on on the subject on my channel. But um, yes, uh, but, <laughs> of course. But uh, link but link first, to the link in the description. Yeah. <laughs> But I first came across it when I was uh, studying Spanish, and 
yeah you need to say okay well what is the subjunctive how do you use it why why is it necessary why don't we just use the indicative okay in in order to analyze i'm not saying i'm a perfect student but either but uh, yeah go yeah. through it analyze it see how it is yeah well, well maybe you can relate to this gideon because you lived in madrid <clears throat> i've lived in madrid i think we did I, I, we spoke about this before. I, I don't know if we coincided, if we were ever living there at the same time, but you must have taken the Metro and you must have heard that. Yeah. The, when, when there's a, the next station is on a corner. So uh, there, there's this really long phrase that they say, uh, I'm not going to say it because I've, I'll make, <laughs> make a mess of it. And it's very, a very complicated phrase in using the subjunctive, the third person using usted rather than do. So the, the formal form. And I, for for weeks, my first few weeks in Spain, I was thinking, what are they? I, I understood what the, they were saying, but I couldn't really get the the grammar. I just because in in English, the equivalent is basically mind the gap. <laughs> three three words. <laughs> yeah. Not Spanish, not so polite. Mind the gap. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Please, sir, mind the gap. It's the, 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 in Spanish or in, in the Madrid metro. It's you know the next station is on a, on a corner. So take care when you disembark or alight from the train basically something like that but you know I, I took my took time to and again I'm not a perfect language learner by you know my Spanish is far far from perfect it needs to be it should be a lot better but but I did take time to analyze that sentence to really understand what they were saying and why they used that grammar and, and that that vocabulary too so yeah I think to be analytical Exactly. I think I think uh, just the the ordinary person on the street will just uh, uh, listen and uh, you know be careful when getting off the train. But a good language learner who doesn't know the language too well. Says, well, why do you use this phrase here? Why do you use this uh, uh, a tense and not the other one? Okay, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to check this in my book. I'm going to ask a, a native speaker, or I'm going to ask my teacher. So that sort of uh, analytical. Uh, a curiosity come back to curiosity is yeah. is, is really important yeah I, I think a lot of these um, traits of a, a language learner overlap but yeah they, they will have slightly different um nuances or, or details that that that, that, um, that are important to know and to take mm. into consideration. So yeah surprisingly at the end we do have 10 adjectives. I, I did think would we'd get a snap but i mean as you said curiosity <laughs> and in inquisitive are very similar but uh, curious and inquisitive are very similar but in general yeah we got 10 10 adjectives yeah, nine and three quarters yeah we can, yeah nine and three quarters <laughs> yeah is that the station in harry potter <laughs> um but yeah i think we can just say check with yourself check, check you know be honest with yourself do you have those traits do you are you well let, let's finish by by listing them are you proactive motivated inquisitive curious patient a good listener brave chatty tenacious and analytical if you're all of those things then you are uh, congratulations you are the perfect <laughs> language learner maybe the viewers have uh, some others that so uh, we we haven't mentioned yeah i'm sure they do i'm sure they're shouting at the screens now because yeah. you, you didn't say this this is really important so <laughs> put put it in the or put them in the comments um, and maybe we'll have end up with like 50 adjectives to create <laughs> create this perfect english learner but yeah I, I, hopefully you found that useful I certainly did. Gideon, thank you for sharing yours. My um, pleasure. Always a pleasure. Very useful. Yeah. And thank you for joining me again on this channel. And um, we'll speak again soon. Bye.